So India is 24 talks about related party disclosures, a pure disclosure standard, no recognition, no measurement. It only revolves around two fundamental aspects. One is who is a related party, who should not be considered as a related party. Second one is about the disclosure requirements. So first of all, who is a related party and who should not be considered as a related party can be understood only if we define the related party relationships. When I talk about a related party relationships, there are two types of relationships which can be considered as related parties. One, an individual being considered as related party. An individual could be Mr. X, Mr. Y or Mr. Z or Mrs. X, Mrs. Y and Mrs. Z. So they are individuals in their capacity being related to the reporting enterprise. The second one is enterprises which can be, con which can be considered as related parties. When can an enterprise be considered as related party? There are multiple relationships which I have to understand. So when does an individual become a related party? is defined further into three aspects. Let us see all those three. So like I told you, according to India's 24, any person can be individual person can be considered as a related party or an enterprise can be considered as a related party. When is an individual considered as a related party? An individual or a person along with his close member of a family can be considered as a related party to the reporting enterprise if he controls the reporting enterprise or if he has a significant influence over the reporting enterprise or is a member of key management personnel. Such key management personnel could be either for the reporting enterprise itself or to the parent of the reporting enterprise. Now we need to fundamentally understand a lot of aspects in this. So let us see what are the aspects that we need to consider in this. Firstly, like I told you, related party to reporting enterprise. This word reporting enterprise will keep on occurring guys. So I'll call it as RE. This word reporting enterprise will keep on occurring while our discussion goes on. So let me call him as RE. Either an individual can be considered as a reporting enterprise or certain enterprises can be considered as related party to reporting enterprise. So individuals can be related parties to reporting enterprise or there can be an enterprise which can be considered as a related party to the reporting enterprise. Now, whenever I get this situation, let us first understand relating to individuals. When can an individual be considered as a related party to reporting enterprise? He says, a person together with his, a person, along with his close members of family can be considered as related party to reporting enterprise if they can establish three relationships. A person together with close members of the family can be considered as a related party to the reporting enterprise pursuant to three relationships. What are those three relationships which we will draw? Number one, number two and number three. Like I told you, three relationships. First one, he has a significant influence or sorry, one second. I will start with control first. He controls the reporting enterprise. He has a significant influence over the reporting enterprise. And finally, the last one is where is a KMP of reporting enterprise. He has 
a significant influence over reporting enterprise or he has a control over the reporting enterprise or he is a KMP of the reporting enterprise. But remember, first of all, we need to understand what is control, what is significant influence and who is this KMP. Whenever I talk about control, a person is said to control the reporting enterprise if he has a voting power of more than 50%. He can direct or control the functions of the enterprise or the operations of the enterprise. Then you say that the person has a control over the reporting enterprise. Predominantly, if a voting power held by a person along with its close members of a family in a reporting enterprise is more than 50%. A person has a significant influence if he has a right to participate in decision making. participate or influence the decision making of enterprise. I cannot control your decision, but I can participate or influence your decision making of reporting enterprise. Even in that instance, you call it as significant influence. Even those enterprise, those individuals shall also be considered as related party to reporting enterprise. Who is a KMP then? A KMP is a key management personnel. Very similar is a word we have seen under India's 108. Very similar is a word we have seen in India's 108 as well. Under India's 108, we call this person as CODM. Under India's 108. Under India's 108, we call that person as CODM, Chief Operating Decision Maker. Now, what does he do? He is an in charge of planning, directing. and controlling the reporting enterprise. He plans the operations of reporting enterprise. He directs the operations of the reporting enterprise. He controls the activities of reporting enterprise. Then he is called as a key management person. Don't go with the word. No enterprise on today's day in an organization has named any designation as key management person. So the designation which belongs to a key management personnel or a person who belongs to the key management person should have the designations as CEO, CFO, MD. These people are generally called as key management person. The one who accesses information for planning, directing and controlling the reporting enterprise, that person can be considered as a KMP. Clear? Now, remember, towards the end, I'll also add one more relationship. I'll say a KMP of the reporting enterprise is a related party and also a KMP of the parent of reporting enterprise is also the related party. Now, if my reporting enterprise is having a holding company or a parent enterprise, then such parent enterprise key management personnel shall also be considered as key management personnel of my reporting enterprise. So what am I saying? An individual along with the close member of his family, if they can control the reporting enterprise, that means have a voting power of at least 50% or more than 50% where they control the decisions of the reporting enterprise or has a significant influence over the reporting enterprise. That means they can participate or influence the decision making of reporting enterprise or a person who is a key management personnel. So that means he is a CODM as per your India's 108. He plans, directs and controls the operations of reporting enterprise. I added one more towards the end where I said a key management personnel of the parent of the reporting enterprise can also be considered as a related party to the reporting enterprise. Now, 
apart from these three, which I've already given, let me tell you one thing that if these three, a person who controls the reporting enterprise or a person who has a significant influence over the reporting enterprise or he is a KMP of the reporting enterprise, if these three individuals If these three individuals either control or have a significant influence or is a KMP of another enterprise if they control another enterprise or have a significant influence over another enterprise or they are a KMP of another enterprise, then such other enterprise, another enterprise should also be considered as a related party. Related party to reporting enterprise. I'll sum up what I said till now. I said, an individual can be considered as a related party to the reporting enterprise if he along with his close members of family i'll define what is a close member of family together control a reporting enterprise that means have at least 50 percent of voting power or have a significant influence over the reporting enterprise that means they participate or influence the decision making having a voting power of at least 20 percent in this case the voting power that they hold is greater than or equal to 20%. That means they have a significant influence over the reporting enterprise or such an individual is a KMP of the reporting enterprise. Who is a KMP? A key management personnel is a person who is vested with the responsibility of planning, directing and controlling the operations of the reporting enterprise is called as a KMP. Generally, your CF, CEOs, CFOs, MDs, these are considered to be related parties to the reporting enterprise because they are considered as KMP, Key Management Personnel. I also added one more relationship towards the end. A KMP of the parent of the reporting enterprise or if that means I am reporting enterprise, I have a holding company. The KMP of this holding company can also be considered as the related party to the reporting enterprise. Apart from these three individuals, I am saying if these three individuals exercise control or have a significant influence or are a KMP of another enterprise, then you can call them as related parties to reporting enterprise. Then you can call them as related parties of reporting enterprise. Clear? Now, we were talking about close member of family. What is this close member of family first of all? Think about an individual and tell me what do you think they should be included in the family. If I am talking about a particular person or an individual, who do you think are his related parties? Who do you think is his close member of family? Number one, father, mother, number two. I'll, talk, I'll come to spouse and children. Wait a second. First, before the spouse and children came up, father and mother was there from the beginning. There's one more relationship which was there from the beginning, which is your brother and sister. Then comes my spouse. Then comes your son and daughter. These are my close members of family. 
remember one more addition that he has done due to indas which was not there under your earlier standard that is as 18 talking about related party uh, related party relationships he is one extra addition along with spouse he used the word domestic partner westernizing of the Indian tradition. So generally in India, we call it a spouse. Okay. So Western word, obviously it need not be a spouse. It can be a domestic partner as well. Okay. Additionally, he talks about the dependence of the, of the spouse can also be considered as related parties, sorry, close members of family to the person. That means the mother of the spouse, father of the spouse, they're also considered as dependents. And those dependents of the spouse can also be considered as a close member of family to the individual or a person which I'm talking about. So fathers, mothers, lenient ascendants, lenient descendants, son and daughter, laterally brother and sister, along with them has spouse or the domestic partner, which is a new addition, along with their dependents. Clear? These are considered to be my close members of family. Clear? Now, an individual together with his close members of family, if they control a reporting enterprise, have a significant influence over the reporting enterprise, or is a key management personnel over of the reporting enterprise, or a key management personnel of the parent of the reporting enterprise, then they can be considered as related parties to reporting enterprise. Apart from that, I added one more. I said, an enterprise in which these individuals mentioned above, if they control, or have a significant influence or are a key management personnel then they have a, that enterprise will also be called as related party to the reporting enterprise if an individual who controls or an individual who has significant influence or an individual who is a kmp of the reporting enterprise if he either controls or has a significant influence or is a kmp of another enterprise then they that other enterprise should also be called as related part. Now, here I will insert a particular exclusion. Exclusion. Let's say I have a person P. Okay. This person P is a KMP to two enterprises. Let's say these two enterprises are X and Y. Then I can say these two enterprises are related parties. I can say that these two enterprises are related parties. But if the same person is only a director to X and Y, he is only a director to X and also a director in Y. Then these X and Y are not considered to be related parties. You cannot conclude just saying that I have a common director that these people are related parties. These cannot be considered as related parties. I'll tell you why. Just because I have a common director in two enterprises does not make these enterprises related just because they are direct for, there is a director in common for two enterprises, I am saying that they cannot be considered as related parties. Now, why do you say that? I am saying, I will come out with this statement now, which is a very important statement. I am saying that a director need not be a KMP. A director holds directorship in an enterprise 
he cannot he need not be a kmp who is a kmp a whole time director is a kmp a whole time director in an enterprise can be considered as a kmp just because he is the director he does not become kmp he should be vested with the responsibility of planning directing and controlling the operations of the reporting enterprise so a director is not kmp by the nature of his directorship just because i have directorship over an enterprise doesn't make me a key management person i might be only a sitting director who is drawing fees i might be an independent director on the board but i cannot be considered as kmp in these situations a managing director a whole time director these people can be considered as key management personnel so just because to, there is a director in common for two enterprises does not make them related parties such a director if he is a kmp of both the enterprise then they should be considered as related party if the director is not a kmp of both the both the enterprises then they should not be considered as related parties to reporting enterprise clear clear so far i am done with my individuals perspective my individuals are done here from here i will start talking about enterprises which are considered as related parties so what did i say a person or an individual can be considered as related party if he together with his close members or family either control the reporting enterprise or have a significant influence over the reporting enterprise or they are a kmp of the reporting enterprise or also they could be a kmp of the parent of the reporting enterprise to be called as related parties to reporting enterprise and i said an enterprise in which these individuals who are mentioned above either control or have a significant influence or is a kmp then such enterprise another enterprise will also be considered as related parties to reporting enterprise i have seen the definition of close member i have seen the new addition besides spouse that they have done but if i look at the exclusion it is very important exclusion just because two enterprises have a director in common does not make them related parties such a director if he is considered as a kmp in both the enterprises then only these enterprises are considered to be related a director need not be a kmp he could be an independent director or he could be he could not he may, may not be a whole time director they are not considered as key management person to be called as a key management personnel only such directors who are in whole time employment with the company should be considered as kmp clear that will bring us to the end of discussion on individuals where an individual can be considered as a related party to reporting enterprise
Now that we have understood individuals who are related to the reporting enterprise, we have also seen one set of enterprises in which these individuals have either a control or a significant influence or a KMP. But now let's get into enterprise relationships where they can be considered as related parties to reporting enterprise. So let's see. First relationship for enterprises to be considered as related party to reporting enterprise. Enterprises which are considered as related party to reporting enterprise RE. Now, there are five relationships which are explained out here. And our definition of related party should be only limited to these five. This is not an inclusive list. This is an exclusive list. Only these five shall be considered as related party to reporting enterprise. The first relationship is where an enterprise and the reporting enterprise are within the same group enterprise. Where an enterprise and the reporting enterprise RE, they belong to the same group companies. What do you mean by a group company? I'll tell you. When I use the word a group company, that means an enterprise that is an enterprise which controls the reporting enterprise, which controls the reporting enterprise or is controlled by reporting enterprise or is under common control with reporting enterprise. So under the first definition, I've seen three parts. What are these three parts? Number one, controls the reporting enterprise, is controlled by reporting enterprise or under common control with reporting enterprise. Which is an enterprise which controls the reporting enterprise? An enterprise which controls the reporting enterprise can be called as a parent. An enterprise which is controlled by the reporting enterprise is called as a subsidiary. An enterprise which is under common control with the reporting enterprise is called as a co-subsidiary. Is called as co-subsidiary. An enterprise and the reporting enterprise belongs to the same group company. That means an enterprise which controls the reporting enterprise or is controlled by the reporting enterprise or is under common control with the reporting enterprise. So that means if I consider a reporting enterprise, RE, an enterprise which controls the reporting enterprise, holding company, an enterprise which is controlled by the reporting enterprise, its subsidiary, an enterprise which is under common control with the reporting enterprise. That means if this holding company has another enterprise which is a subsidiary to it then reporting enterprise and this other enterprise are called as co-subsidiaries. So one, two and three, three relationships included under the first one. Look at what I just said. I said an enterprise which and the reporting enterprise are under same control or common control with the reporting enterprise. Just a second again. 
reporting enterprise and the other enterprise are under same control or under the same group enterprises. An enterprise which controls the reporting enterprise or is controlled by the reporting enterprise or is it common control with the reporting enterprise can be considered as related parties to reporting enterprise. This is the first relationship under which we have seen three categories where three enterprises can be considered as related parties to reporting enterprise. Let's get into the second category then. This is the first one. I said there are five. So first one we have already seen. Let's get into the second one. An associate or a joint venture of reporting enterprise. An associate or joint venture of reporting enterprise. What do you mean by this associate or joint venture of reporting enterprise? If I have a reporting enterprise, if I have a reporting enterprise which has a significant influence over another enterprise, if I have a significant influence over another enterprise, it is called as my associate. When do you call it as an associate? When I exercise significant influence. Significant influence. When do I say that there is a significant influence? I can say that the reporting enterprise has a significant influence over another enterprise if it holds at least 20% of voting power in another enterprise. Then you can say the other enterprise is an associate on which the reporting enterprise has a significant influence and should be considered as a related party included in the definition as per India's 24. Second, where I have a joint venture. When do you say I have a joint venture? I'll say I have a joint venture if I jointly control the joint venture along with other enterprises. I have a joint control. Guys, whenever I have joint control, I alone am not controlling. That means there is someone else who is controlling this joint venture with me. That someone else is basically called as a co-venturer. A co a reporting enterprise together with their co-venturer is jointly controlling the joint venture. Then this joint venture is a related part. A reporting enterprise has a significant influence over another enterprise. This other enterprise is called as an associate which should be considered as related part. However, this co-venturer is not a related party to the reporting enterprise. The co-venturer or co-venturers with whom or together with whom I exercise joint control over a joint venture, they cannot, those co-venturers are not considered as related parties. Only the joint venture should be considered as related party to the reporting enterprise. Clear? This is my second part. First one, same group enterprises. Second one, associates and joint ventures. Third one, enterprises to which the reporting enterprise itself is an associate or a joint venture. So what am I saying? If a reporting enterprise has an associate, or if a reporting enterprise has a joint venture, they are anyways related party as per part 2. But part 3 is saying, enterprises to which relate reporting enterprise itself is an associate or a joint venture. I will tell you what it means. That means, I have a reporting enterprise, RE. I have another enterprise, which significantly influences the reporting enterprise. Another enterprise 
has a significant influence over reporting enterprise. When do you say that they have a significant influence over reporting enterprise? Only if they have a voting power of at least 20% in the reporting enterprise. These parties or these enterprises are called as investing party. They are called as investing party. An investing party has a significant influence over the reporting enterprise, then such in investing party should be considered as a related party to the reporting enterprise. What if the reporting enterprise itself is a joint venture? When do you say the reporting in enterprise itself is a joint venture? When there are two or more co-venturers who are jointly controlling my enterprise. Jointly control reporting enterprise. These people are generally called as co-venturers. Let's say I am having A and B. This A, B are nothing but the co-venturers who are jointly controlling the reporting enterprise. So the two enterprises to which reporting enterprise is a joint venture, those two enterprises should be considered as report related parties to reporting enterprise or there is an enterprise which has a significant influence over the related party. Even that enterprise should be having should be considered as related party to reporting enterprise. When do you say that they, it, is, they, it is an associate? Only if the other enterprise has a significant influence over the reporting enterprise. That means holds at least 20% of voting power in the reporting enterprise. Clear? Clear till here? Now, the fourth one. Part four. When a reporting enterprise and another enterprise are under the same joint control. Are under same joint control. What is the same joint control? I'll tell you. Let's say I have co venturers. My set of co venturers are basically two enterprises A and B. They together, A and B together, exercise. Joint control, they exercise joint control over the reporting enterprise. Okay, along with that, the same co venturers are having joint control over another enterprise. Another enterprise, I'm naming it as E. and they have the same joint control then this enterprise and the reporting enterprise are said to be under the same joint control since they are under the same joint control these enterprises should also be considered as related party they should be considered as related party as per india 24 a and B anyways are related because they are jointly controlling the reporting enterprise. But if they together jointly control another enterprise, then even the other enterprise should be considered to be an, as a related party as per India's 24. Fourth part. What are the four parts that we have discussed so far? Number one, the enterprise and the reporting enterprise, they belong to the same group companies. Associates and joint ventures of the reporting enterprise. Enterprises to which the reporting enterprise itself is an associate or a joint venture. Number four, two enterprises which are under the same joint control can be called as related parties. Clear? 
Now I'll come to the last and the fifth one. Post employment plan. Any post employment plans that we have discussed as per in days 9, they are being managed by a multi employer plan. Sorry, post employer benefits. Benefits post employment to my employees are handled through multi employer plan. Then the multi employer plan should be considered as my related party. This is my related party. If you remember, this was a part of in days 19. Now, what did we discuss under in days 19 regarding multi employer plan? I said hiring the fund manager might not be easy for each enterprise individually. So there might be a situation where the reporting enterprise together with other enterprises, let's say A, B, C have come together and have formed a multi employer plan. They together have formed a multi employer plan. Right? They together, ABC together with reporting enterprise, they are participants of multi employer plan. In such case, this multi employer plan is related party to reporting enterprise. But the other participants, they are not related parties. I'll repeat, I said, the other participants, in the plan, are not related parties. And what is related party? Only the multi employer plan, should be considered as related party to reporting enterprise. So the other participants shall not be considered as related party to the reporting enterprise just because they are subscribing to the same multi employer plan. They are managing their multi post employment benefits with the help of multi employer plan together does not make them related parties. Only the multi employer plan is related to A, related to B, related to C and also related to the reporting enterprise, but A, B, C and reporting enterprise among themselves are not related parties. Among themselves, they cannot be considered as related parties. Clear? So we have done with five independent inclusions under the definition of related party. Let's see. What are the five things? First one. The reporting enterprise and the other enterprise are a part of the same group enterprises. That means an enterprise which controls the reporting enterprise or is controlled by the reporting enterprise or are within a common control with the reporting enterprise. They should be considered as related parties. An associate or a joint venture of the reporting enterprise should also be considered as a related party. While enterprises to which the reporting enterprise is an associate or a joint venture should also be considered as related party. Number four, enterprise and the reporting enterprise are under same joint control or a common joint control. Lastly, multi employer plan to which the reporting enterprise is a participant, while other participants of the multi employer plan are not supposed to be considered as related parties. Clear? Now, like we have seen earlier, we will also come across here in this situation also an exclusion from related party. What is the exclusion from related party? If in case an enterprise uh, or the report, an enterprise has a significant influence over the reporting enterprise. An enterprise has significant influence over the reporting enterprise. If such enterprises which is significantly influencing the reporting enterprise has another enterprise in which they have a joint control or a control. If they jointly control it or they control it, then you can say that these two enterprises are related parties. 
However, if a common enterprise, if an enterprise has two enterprises in which they have significant influence, just by virtue of significant influence, these two enterprises are not supposed to be considered as related. Let's see what I just said. I was talking about exclusion. One exclusion where we have dealt with under individuals. Here I am talking about another exclusion. What is the exclusion which I am talking about? I say that. If enterprise X has a significant influence over reporting enterprise, it has a significant influence over reporting enterprise while it controls the other enterprise or jointly controls the other enterprise. Then in such cases, A and B are considered to be related party. But you said exclusion, no, I'll talk about. If in case, if in case, the same way there is X, there is a reporting enterprise and there is another enterprise A. If X has a significant influence over reporting enterprise and has a similar significant influence even over another enterprise, then in such cases, these two parties which are under a common significant influence, they should not be considered as related party. They should not be considered as related party. I'm writing related parties and I'll strike it off. Two enterprises which have a common significant influence are not considered to be related parties. If I give you one more way of writing this down, X, there is a reporting enterprise, another enterprise A. If X has established a control over the reporting enterprise, if X has a control or is jointly controlling the reporting enterprise, then a will be considered as a related party only if X controls or jointly controls or has a significant influence. If in case X in reporting enterprise only has a significant influence, it only has significant influence, it does not have a control or joint control. then I will consider A as my related party only if I can have a control or joint control. Significant influence concept does not come up in the second case because if I write significant influence, then the reporting enterprise and enterprise A both will be under common significant influence. Common significant influence cannot be considered to be related party. So for me to call it as a related party, if X has a control or a joint control over reporting enterprise, then they can either control or jointly control or have a significant influence over other enterprise. 
to make this other enterprise related to the reporting enterprise. But if in case X is having a significant influence over reporting enterprise, then another enterprise will be considered as related to reporting enterprise only if X controls or jointly controls the other enterprise. If they have significant influence over both the enterprises, they are not considered to be related parties to reporting enterprise. And this is an exclusion that we have dealt with as far as this particular enterprise is concerned. We also dealt with an exclusion earlier when we were talking about individuals, where I said, if two, if two enterprises have a common director, they are not related parties. Only if they have a common KMP, they are a related party. Where I told you, whole time directors are KMP. Just because someone is a director does not mean that they will come under the definition of key, uh, key management personnel. Clear? Certain relationships are not considered to be related parties as per India's 24. We have seen one such thing where we said common directors in two enterprises does not mean that these two enterprises are related to each other. We have also seen uh, where an enterprise has significant influence over the reporting enterprise and also over another enterprise. The other enterprise and the related party uh, and the reporting enterprise are not related party. We also seen one more when we were discussing earlier where I said, where the enterprise has, where the reporting enterprise jointly controls another enterprise, then the joint venture will be considered as my related party, but the other co-venturer will not be considered as my related party. These are three things which I have already seen. Let us once again look at. First one, two enterprises having a common director unless the director is a key management person. This is the first thing that we have discussed when we were talking about exceptions to related parties for individuals. While I was talking about enterprises, I came up with this logic saying that two co-venturers 
having a joint control over a joint venture they are not re related party among each other the joint venture is related party to each of the co venturer but among themselves they cannot be considered as related parties now providers of finance trade unions regulating bodies and public utilities guys providers of finance they normally have a significant influence over the reporting enterprise today's day startups are the most happening thing around you found paytms olas flipkarts doing amazingly well coming from a startup level for them the providers of finance they normally provide it in the form of convertible preference shares these convertible preference shares whenever they give they are providers of finance but they influence the decision making of the reporting enterprise to a major extent but they cannot be considered as related parties a bank providing a loan a significant amount of loan to the reporting enterprise cannot be considered as a related party tata capital and nbfc providing debt to a related party or to pro to a providing debt to a reporting enterprise cannot be considered as related party to the reporting enterprise trade unions very strong very strong trade unions there is they can actually lock down the factory at any point of time even though they are so strong you cannot consider them as related party to the reporting enterprise even though they influence the decisions of the reporting enterprise to a certain extent regulating bodies your cbc cbdt your gst council so they have a significant influence on the pricing of the product if a gst rate goes up automatically the selling price goes up they are influencing the pricing decisions if the gst rate goes up then probably on my raw material input the cost of the equipment or the cost of raw material also might go up so these decisions of the regulating bodies have a significant influence on my operations but they should not be considered as related parties public utilities electricity water connection they do influence the operations of the enterprise if there is a power cut for 2 days obviously it will affect my manufacturing facility but they should not be considered as related parties to reporting enterprise specific exclusion given under india s24 i have only one single customer whatever i produce is only sold to that customer customer is giving me requirement based on his requirement i am manufacturing goods only that is my customer that's it beyond that i don't have any other customer can this single customer be called as your related party no i purchase material only from one particular person i don't buy from anyone else this is the only supplier which i have got can that supplier influence the decisions of the reporting enterprise yes if it does not supply on time then obviously i'll have a significant effect on my operations of the enterprise so there is a definite influence but they cannot be considered as related parties under india s24 a single distributor a single agent with whom the enterprise transacts significant volumes they should not be considered as related parties to reporting enterprise government taxes i paid 30% sir significant amount i paid apart from that 18% gst i paid 48 48% government only took where am i a, a, a controlling interest sir government is controlling this enterprise by collecting 48% taxes here so even in such situation your transactions with government and transactions with government enterprises cannot be considered as related party transactions clear i cannot say nirmala sitaraman ji who is the finance minister is my related party because her decisions regarding the policy are influencing the operations of my enterprise cannot be considered as related party clear any transaction with the government or with any government enterprise will not be considered as related party by the virtue of their position clear what are the disclosures to be necessary whenever i have a related party disclosures then i'll have to understand the disclosures in two sets i'll break them down into two parts number 1 where i talk about related party disclosures when there is no transaction which exists in the in the previous year i have no transaction which exists in the previous year am i exempted from disclosure just because i don't have transactions no even if i don't transact with a related party in the preceding financial year 
I should continue to give certain set of disclosures. But these disclosures will, will be enhanced, will be increased if there is a transaction which exists with the related party. If I don't have any transaction with the reporting with the related party of the reporting enterprise, even in such situation, I'll have to disclose two things. What is the name of the enterprise? What is the nature of relationship which the reporting enterprise has with the other enterprise? At least these two things have to be disclosed. But if there is a transaction which exists in the preceding financial year, then you will have enhanced disclosures. What is the increased disclosures apart from the name of the related party and the nature of report and the nature of relationship? Additional disclosures are what is the nature of transaction that you had with the related party? What volume did you transact with? I've transacted for with the related party for purchase of raw material. During the previous year, I totally purchased 140 crores of raw material from my related party. For this, at the end of the balance sheet date, so and so amount is still outstanding to be paid. I made, they made a provision for write-off during the current year. So even such provision to be written off or the amount written off during the preceding year should also be reported. And any other materials of the uh, material facts of the case or material facts of the transaction, if they are concealed with, might influence the decision making of the user. They would influence the decision making of the user if I don't disclose such a fact. Then such facts are called as material facts. Such material facts should also be disclosed along. So what am I saying? If I have a transaction with a reporting enterprise, with a related party of the reporting enterprise, then the disclosures, apart from the name of the related party and the nature of relationship, I'll have to additionally disclose what is the nature of transaction, what is the volume of the transaction, what is the amount outstanding at the end of the year, what is the amount written off or provided for during the current year, and any other material facts which if concealed would have influenced the decision making of the user, they have to be disclosed. If I talk about a key management personnel like a CEO, CFO, MDs, for them, I'll have to disclose what is their short term benefits, post employment benefits which are accruing to them, the termination benefits if any paid to them and finally any ESOPs allowed to them, share based payments allowed to them which we discuss as a part of India's 102. Short term benefits, post employment benefits and termination benefits as discussed under India's 19 while share based payments point number 4, ESOPs or SAR discussed as per India's 102. They have to be disclosed. So this is my disclosure requirements whenever I have a transaction or when I don't have a transaction with a related party in the preceding financial year or in the current reporting period. However, when you have a transaction with a related party, they are eligible to be aggregated. That means combined. Let's say I have a related party X. Every 10 days, I procure raw material from X. I purchase raw material from X for every 10 days or let's say every week. Like that, I perform 52 transactions during the year. If I keep on reporting number one transaction on 1st of April, so and so value. Transaction on 8th of April, so and so value for purchase of raw material. Transaction on 15th April, purchase of raw material from X so and so value. If I keep on doing like this, 52 times I have to report. Guys, don't you think too much of volume in your related in your disclosures is also unnecessary? And it defeats the purpose of financial statements because the financial statement should be reliable and relevant. How is it relevant when it is the same related party and you have the same nature of transactions? If you are reporting it multiple times or disclosing it multiple times, it is no longer relevant. That is the reason why to enhance the reliability and the relevance of the reporting enterprise, he says you can disclose as an aggregate, you can disclose as a combination, as one single amount, only if, only if it is a transaction of similar nature with the same related party. If it is a transaction of similar nature with the same related party, Purchase of raw material from 
X which is a related party, purchase of raw material from Y which is also a related party, purchase of raw material from Z which is also a related party cannot be aggregated even though the transaction is of same nature because it is not with the same enterprise, not supposed to be aggregated. I purchased raw material from X, I purchased uh, uh, fixed assets from X, I took a loan from X, you cannot aggregate. Though it is with the same party, it is not the same nature of transaction. You have multiple natures of transactions involved here. So therefore, whenever you have a transaction which can be aggregated for a related party, then they should be of similar nature and the transaction should be of the same related party. Not sale guys, transactions with same related party and transactions of similar nature can be aggregated and disclosed as one single item. Clear? And that will bring us to the end of discussion relating this standard in days 24.